You need engine data. You need it now, not later. Keep application 2.0. Oh, it's you. Ah, hello, you little monkey fuckers. All right. So today we're going to have a little bit of a kind of a Kip U. You'll notice that there's a playlist called Kip U, Kip University. You're going to learn. We're going to learn together. Uh, after doing this for many years now, first time ever I've encountered a bad Chrysler fuel injector, um, which is not to say it can't happen. It just has never happened to me. These things just never fail. I could show you fuel injectors with 800,000 miles on them, and they work as, as good as they did when they were new. But it uh, struck me as a good opportunity to do a little kip you on how to diagnose such a thing and how, and how to know if your fuel injector is bad. So <clears throat> here's what will happen if your fuel injector is bad. You'll get a code P0201 for fuel injector 1 through 6 in a Pentastar, 6 cylinders. So in this case, this happened to be uh, injector number four, P0204, for those of you who are planning on taking the quiz at the end of this video. Um, along with that injector code was a misfire for cylinder four, and in fact, a global misfire because another cylinder, most likely five, because the firing order is one, two, three, four, five, probably was interrupted enough by the main misfire to affect the timing of the other one. That's how the computer determines if a cylinder is firing. It's the position of the crankshaft. If it had fired, it would expect it here, but it didn't fire, so it's actually slower. That's how it kind of works. But anyway, absent a 2-0-X code uh, for, for one of your bad fuel injectors, I should also point out that the code reads circuit open or circuit high or circuit low, um, meaning the computer is measuring the resistance of this or impedance or, or whatever it's doing. Uh, and that's how it fires the injectors. The injectors, as you can see, or maybe you can, are just a two-wire affair, positive and ground. And in fact, in a Chrysler, to the best of my knowledge, the positives are all common. And then the, the grounds go back to the computer and the computer makes the ground and that's how it fires the, the injector. The injector itself is just basically a cylinder with a magnet, an electromagnet. So when it fires, it pulls back and the fuel flows because there's pressure in the fuel rail. And uh, when it's closed, it can't flow, and that's just how the thing injects. Uh, you probably can't see, but there's these little holes at the end of the injector that make a spray pattern or kind of a mist. They don't really make a fog, but it doesn't really matter. Tiny little holes, and uh, that's how the damn thing works. All right. Anyway, the computer was detecting this 204 red uh, circuit open, I think, or circuit something. And the way I determined that was I got the intake off, and I happen to have an intake sitting right here, so we can kind of figure out uh, we're gonna learn some things together you're gonna for once in your life you're gonna learn something and like so all right armed with your meter your standard multimeter voltmeter i've got it set to i'll put it at 200 ohms come to find out that a normal fuel injector will meter if i just go across the two pins at 12 ohms something like 12 ohms 12.1, I go to this injector over here, 12.0, if I were to go to this injector, here, 12.1, but what if I go to this now known bad injector that I took out of that engine? Look at that. And that's how I knew. And that's a very easy diagnostic because while it takes some time to get the upper intake off so you can get to this, once you do, all six injectors are just kind of sitting there, right? And, you know, you take the connector off, which is a two-stage arrangement. The red thing comes up. You may have to pry at it with a pick or something to get under the edge of it. And then it's a squeeze and pull. And then you can get to these two pins and test. So, I mean, pretty straightforward. This video isn't super complicated. Just because I like the edumacation, I suppose if you were to find this bad suspect injector as an open load, meaning infinite resistance, or a dead short, zero impedance, zero uh, ohm, zero resistance, that'd be fine too. You could also, you could actually, no, you couldn't check it with a test light, but I was just surprised to find this one just reading consistently double its the, the normal resistance it should have, um, and still... The engine was running okay. This was kind of an intermittent problem or something. I don't, I don't know. I'd have to take it apart to find out exactly. And I, I don't think it's particularly important. While we're here, we've got a fuel 
This is the lower intake manifold. This is your fuel rail where pressurized fuel comes in, fills this whole megilla, and keeps a consistent pressure across all the injectors. Uh, in the Pentastar, it is a returnless system. So unlike a fuel injection system of old, which would have a fuel pres pressure regulator and then a return back to the tank, this is returnless. It self bleeds. I don't know exactly how it does it, but it does it great. Even if you were to drain all the gas out of such a thing like this one, it would pressurize and bleed itself within a few revolutions of cranking and uh, just not a, big, not a big pain in the ass. The way I was able to replace just the one injector was to, you'll note that there is four T30 torques that hold the rail down and I was just able to take up one side and because this tube is somewhat flexible, I just peeled up the rail. All three injectors on this side came up, I just swapped them. They'll have an O-ring at the top and an O-ring at the bottom. In the Chrysler, the top one is blue and the bottom one is red, although I'm pretty sure they're identical and it wouldn't really matter. And of course, if they weren't, the thing would leak. Uh, it would either have a vacuum leak or it would actually leak fuel, so you would know. When you put the rail back on, that clamping force is what sandwiches and holds the injectors back together. If you were to look at this intake manifold, you would see that there's six cylinders, six gasket seals, and here's the injector nub, and it just shoots its, its wad down into the hole, you know, like a lady I know, and uh, everybody's happy. The, I guess that's really all there is to know. The lower fuel, the lower, uh, Intake manifold, or I guess you could call it the plenum. No, the plenum would be the up above one. Anyway, the lower, this assembly, the lower injector assembly, lower intake manifold, is available in aluminum. Uh, some guys buy that. I don't really know why the, the, this thing is an assembly doesn't really fail. Uh, occasionally, sometimes they will crack here. Yeah, this one's, is it cracked? No. But if it gets over tightened, it'll crack here. But it doesn't really matter because the way the gasket works is you're just using the gasket to make the seal. So it doesn't take a huge ton of force to, to clamp this thing down. This thing has four, five, six, seven, eight bolts on it at uh, 84 inch pounds, I believe is the spec. And it's they just don't leak or warp or do anything like that. They will melt if the engine overheats bad enough and then you'd need a new one. I should also point out that this lower is generic to all the Pentastar so far as I know, except for the Pentastar upgrade, which in a ProMaster is 20, yeah, model year 22 and up, and they started rolling out in various vehicles at various times. The difference between the upgraded lower is this area. I don't know if you can see, but it's smoother, so it technically flows a little bit more air. I don't really think it's important. I mean, I guess it's important in a Challenger or some kind of sports car with a Pentastar, but for practical purposes, it isn't really important. Should you do the aluminum upgrade? No, I don't see any need for it. It's cool looking, but uh, it's just, it, it, it isn't solving a, a known problem. It's just upgrading a plastic part to aluminum just because you feel like it. Is there anything else to know? I suppose if you have, if you suspect the injectors, what you can do is go to a junkyard and get this whole assembly and put your fuel rail on it. Or if this thing cracks or melts or whatever, they're not, these aren't super expensive new. I would assume that Chrysler probably gets something like 300 bucks for this, but junkyards would have them for, you would think, under 100 bucks. And uh, I'm pretty sure there's repops on Amazon for quite cheap. But as I say, it doesn't really go bad. But anyway, let's sum it up, shall we? Let's go back to, to the face. So my... Fabulous. There we go. Look at that. Look at me doing stuff here. This is this is the good. Now we're all good. There we go. There we go. All right. Let's sum it up. First time in 10 years, a bad, actually bad Chrysler fuel injector. And that's exciting. Put it in, clear the codes, no codes, no nothing. And that's all there is to know about your little fuel injector. All right. Well then, kids, that was your exciting, educational, and informative uh, video about fuel injectors. Mwah, the best. C'est magnifique. I will see you next time.
Buy this freaking 